Hello and welcome back. We now have some snow taking place in our level. So if I click on my snow object, you can see that kind of blowing around. But what I'd like to do in this video is take the overall, uh, what you, I guess the environmental feel of mm -hmm. our level and push it just a little bit further. We're going to add some fog and uh, that'll, that'll kind of help close in the level a little bit, uh, kind of help take distant things and push them away a little. It'll help make things feel a little colder, especially if we tint the fog very slightly. Mm. And we're going to take our ambient coloration for the level and push it just a little bit toward blue. Because right now we've got a completely neutral gray, which is going to tend to feel a little warm. So to do all of this, we only need to go to one location. Uh, we're going to go under Edit and jump down to the Render Settings. So under the Edit menu, come down to Render Settings. And that'll update your inspector to show you the render settings for this level. Now, we have all kinds of stuff. Everything I already talked about is right here in front of us. We have our fog color, which you can see here. And currently, fog is not checked. So that's the very first uh, property there is fog. And we also have our ambient light. So let's start off simply. Let's just check fog. And we'll turn that on. And it's like, wow, we're done. That was easy. <laughs> but no, I mean, we don't want to use just the, the default color that came in. Uh, partly because, again, we have kind of a neutral gray, which because we have a blue sky is going to contrast out to feeling very warm. It'll feel more like uh, dust or steam from something, and we just don't want that. So let's click on our little color swatch here. Now there's a couple of ways to do what I'm about to do. You can click on your color swatch, and we have a, a perfectly good color picker here that will either go with uh, HSV values, I think it's RGB by default, right, yes. but you can jump between the two using this little tiny button here. So here's RGB values if you like RGB sliders, or you can use HSV values if you prefer that. And you could always just change the color of your fog to anything that feels right. And of course, I would go something that was a little cool, but if you're having a hard time picking just the right shade of blue, use your skybox as an example. We have a color picker up here, and actually, when you have uh, the, well, we have the eyedropper tool. We're already in like the, the color chooser screen, but this has one of the coolest uh, color picker features I've ever seen like in any application. While you're here inside of your, your color chooser window, if you click on the little eyedropper, what happens is the color choosing screen updates to show you a really zoomed in section, and you can see exact, exactly what pixel you're capturing, and you can capture from anywhere. So we could go capture from the Unity logo if we really wanted to, or capture from the little red widget over here from the, the scene gizmo. So what I'm going to do is grab one of the color, shades of blue here from the sky. And that's nice, but it's, it's almost like it's a little bit too much. It's become really, really dark uh, all of a sudden. So we can push that in a couple of different directions. Now, I'm going to make sure we stay in HSV, but of course, if you like RGB, you can do that. But... With HSV active, I can make this just a little bit brighter. We don't want to go too much. I'll pull down the saturation a little bit. And let's just leave it right there for now. If we go ahead and close our color, now we can play with our fog density and control how thick the fog is. Now I just drag that over to zero. Now anytime you see these uh, numerical properties like this, you can punch in about Like we could set this back to 0.1 and press enter. But anytime you, you see these two little arrows pointing left and right, you can also drag with the left mouse button and change the value that way. So obviously you don't want to set this too high because you get this. And the idea is to find a value that works for you. Now, this is a very, very delicate value as you've <laughs> already seen. So uh, 0.1 is really way too high. 0 0.01 is looking okay. We could try like 0 0.025. Or I don't know what I just tried to type in there. Oh, yeah, double typed it. Yeah. And even that's a little much. So, I mean, let's try 0.15. And then a lot of it comes down to just testing. Now, this fog is just a little bit too blue, I think. Mm -hmm. It was starting out okay, but uh, we're going to have to desaturate a little. And some of it, really, you just have to get into the level and try. So now let's go back to our color swatch. And here in our HSV values, let's just pull saturation way down. I still like the idea of it being just the tiniest little bit blue, but that was way too much. Now, it is going to look a little bit less than 100% perfectly natural when you get to the horizon line. 
and that's because of the way this fog works. This is not like a volume of fog that just kind of fills up everything you see. It's uh, The skybox is going to rule it out. So you won't see uh, the fog draw over the skybox. That's just something we have to deal with when using this kind of fog. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. So don't stress too hard about that. But it does make, like, when we come around the corner and see this tunnel, it does look a lot more ominous kind of coming out of the fog. And I do like the feel of that. And it looks like this is the one area of the level that doesn't get much snow, which is also kind of freaky. <laughs> so I'm going to get away from there because I'm scared now. And then we have kind of the the misty sensations we get over here. I still think the fog might be a little bit too heavy. So I'm going to stop. We could pull this back down. What do you think? I'd say try 0, 7, 5. Zero, zero, seven, zero, five. Zero, seven, five. Okay, so just kind of a faint haze yeah, kind of out so, there in the distance. Yeah, more more atmosphere perspective yeah. than anything else. And that I'm digging. It also keeps you from getting too much of a problem where the horizon meets the skybox. So there's a quick look at adding in fog. Now, the other thing we were going to change is our ambient light. Now, our ambient light has always been there. As a matter of fact, if you're paying really close attention, uh, way back when we first started uh, setting up our terrain, we hit play at one point mm -hmm. when, we were, uh, when we had just started sculpting out our terrain, and all we saw was kind of a dark gray mass and then the basic blue color behind it. The reason that the terrain was gray and not perfectly pitch black is because there was an ambient light already being applied. We can still show it. Go ahead and select the uh, sunlight itself. Uh-huh. And there it is. And then deactivate it. So just switch it off. So now and all the light that you're getting in there is either coming from the skybox being lit itself or from the ambient light. Basically, all this stuff on the ground should be all from the ambient yep. light. Yep. So now, if you were to go back into the render settings. Which we can do while we play. Yep. We should be able to. So let's go back into render settings. Now, if you dial the ambient light all the way down to black. Everything's just black on black and really scary looking. <laughs> we can make it red and terrifying. But as you can see, the ambient light is very flat. It doesn't bring out any of the contour of any of the objects. Right, it's just kind of a way to bring up a sort of generic sensation of light all around your level. It's a cheap way of almost uh, insinuating bounce light, if you were. That's true, and it is a really cheap way to do it. Now, I'm going to turn my light back on, so let's go back over to the sunlight, and let's activate that again. Now, let's go back into our render settings. Again, that's under the edit menu. Now, to choose just the right color, I'm going to grab a section of the skybox that's got a lot of the, the darker shades. And we'll do exactly the same thing we did with the fog, at least for starters. At this time, though, we won't even worry about the color picker. Let's just grab oh, or the, uh, well, the color chooser window. We won't click on the color swatch. We can go ahead and grab the eyedropper here and then click somewhere out here in the sky, and that's already a good place to start. Now, everything got really blue. <laughs> That's not necessarily a problem, but it's still a little bit too bright. So let's jump into the color swatch. We can start off by grabbing our value in HSV mode, of course, not in RGB. And we can take our V slider and drag it down probably somewhere, I don't know, 15, 18. Uh, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So we're just putting a tiny little bit of light. Now, is there any other considerations when ha with having your ambient light? Well, depending on what you're going to end up doing with your overall lighting, you don't want to have a lot of ambient light in the scene, especially if you're going to start using the light mapping ability that comes with Beast, mm -hmm. because you can actually dial in uh, global illumination and bounce light, and that will, it would take over the place of ambient light, and with your ambient light turned on, it could actually overdrive the effect more than you want. Gotcha, gotcha. But we'll leave it pretty dark, and if we need to tone it down further, we can always tone right. it down further. And there is another thing that we can do to kind of dial in the feel for our level, if you want, mm -hmm. is actually go back to the sunlight itself. Sure. And if we set its color to match near where our sun is in our sky map, and that's true. This is actually something that you generally shouldn't do that often is leave really any of your lights 
at a pure white. Right. It's a real noobish thing to do, um, and it's something I just I hadn't even thought about changing yet, so I'm really glad you pointed it out. So uh, here we have our color. Let's just go ahead and grab our color picker, and we could start up here, and it's actually kind of a, a, a strange shade of yeah, greenish, wow. bluish. And it's an interesting color. So let's see. Now if we rotate down here, of course, that's a little bit too dark, obviously. Right. But we can just grab our value and bring that way up like so. But because it's in a cooler range of color, it actually lends to the scene being a bit colder than it was before. Exactly, which is very nice. Now, let's see. Is there anything else really? I mean, I keep wanting to reach over and grab the intensity of the light and kick it up just the tiniest little amount. Like, we just went from 0 0.3, uh, 0.35 or so to about 0.4. And I'm liking that just a little bit better. But I might have just made things too bright. It's one of those things you can just play, and a lot of it comes down to personal preference. Right. And we still don't have shadows in the level, which is going to bring down the over overall appearance of brightness in our scene a bit once we got the shadows in. There are a lot of other tricks that we can dial in to get the, the feel even um, more accurate to a winner's day. Yeah. And especially when we start baking things out, there's a lot of values that have to play off of each other. So dialing in one and going, oh, that's it, I never have to touch it again, isn't exactly the way it works. Yeah, that's not that's not realistic. But I think with that, we've taken care of everything we wanted to tackle here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of helped the overall uh, environmental feel of our level, and we've done that by adding in some very faint fog. Uh, we've also tweaked our ambient light to cool things down a little bit. Uh, we've also kind of darkened the ambient light overall, mm -hmm. and we've added a, a much cooler nature to our sunlight. So that's everything I wanted to cover here. It's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.